Hello everybody and welcome back to Great Woman History. Today I'll be discussing Mary Wollstonecraft. I know that some of you may wonder why I would discuss a writer when previous videos were on women rulers and warriors. The truth is that Mary Wollstonecraft is in large part responsible for many of the freedoms that women in the Western world have today. She might not have been the most glamorous or exciting woman, but we owe her a great deal. Mary was born to Elizabeth Dixon and Edward John Wollstonecraft on April 27, 1759. She was part of a big family, the second of seven children. Edward's father was a successful weaver, but Edward squandered his inheritance on various unsuccessful projects. The family was frequently forced to move due to their financial instability. As a result, Mary's brother Ned was the only one who received a formal education. This is not to say that Mary was uneducated. For a woman of her time, her level of education was typical. She was knowledgeable of the Bible and classical philosophers. She just did not have the formal education to become a lawyer like her brother Ned. Another result of Mary's family's financial difficulties is that Mary had few marriage prospects when she came of age. As a result, she sought out the careers that were acceptable for women of the time. She would spend time as a companion, governess, and teacher throughout her life. In 1778, she became a lady's companion to a Mrs. Dawson. The two did not get along well. Fortunately, well, really unfortunately, in 1780, or 1781, different sources give different years, Mary's mother fell ill and Mary had to leave her position with Mrs. Dawson and return home. In 1782, Mary's mother died. Mary would then move in with her friend Fanny Blood and then her sister Eliza. In 1783, Eliza was a new mother. It seems likely that she was suffering from postpartum depression. In January of 1784, Mary and Eliza ran away from Eliza's husband, leaving Eliza's infant daughter behind. The baby would die a few months later. Mary, Eliza, and Fanny then decided that they would create a school for girls in Newington Green. Newington Green was a dissenting community, which is to say it was comprised of Protestants who wanted to break away from the Church of England. The school would not last long, though. In 1785, Fanny and her husband moved to Portugal. Later in the year, Mary also moved to Portugal to help Fanny, who was expecting a baby. The absence of Mary and Fanny caused the school to fail. Fanny died shortly after giving birth, and the baby did not live long. After Fanny's death, Mary left Portugal and became a governess to the Kingsborough family in Ireland. After a year, though, she left the family and decided to become an author. Women writers were not common in the 18th century. Mary was an exception, and she wrote many famous works. She wrote educational books, novels, and travel books. By far, her most famous book is The Vindication of the Rights of Women. Through this work, Mary demonstrated her belief that women should have the same fundamental rights as men, that if they were to be the ones raising children, they should be educated well enough to do so properly, and that women are human beings, not simply ornaments or property. In 1792, Mary Wollstonecraft traveled to France. She arrived in time to see Louis XVI being taken to his trial. Revolutionary France was tumultuous and quite dangerous, and in 1793, France declared war on Britain. Mary tried to leave, but was denied permission. During the Reign of Terror, all foreigners were barred from leaving France. Fortunately for Mary, she had formed a close relationship with an American named Gilbert Imlay. They started living together as husband and wife. The Society of 1793 France had much more important things to worry about than their scandalous relationship. Imlay went so far as to register Mary as his wife with the American Embassy. This meant that Mary would be considered an American citizen instead of a British one, and it is this that likely saved her. Since the Committee of Public Safety had gone to war against Britain, many British citizens living in France were rounded up and some were even executed. Mary would write to her sister about the Reign of Terror. It is impossible for you to have any idea of the impression the sad scenes I have been a witness to have left on my mind. Death and misery. And every shape of terror haunts this devoted country. I certainly am glad that I came to France, because I never could have had else a just opinion of the most extraordinary event that has ever been recorded. Mary's relationship with Emily caused her a great deal of hardship. Despite her love for him, he had no problem neglecting her, first leaving her in Le Havre while she was pregnant, and then leaving her and her infant daughter Fanny in Paris while he was in England. In 1795, Mary attempted suicide twice. Both times were a result of their troubled relationship. In April of 1795, Mary returned to England and referred to herself as Mrs. Imlay, so Fanny would be considered a legitimate child. Mary and Fanny then went to Scandinavia to help Imlay with his business. They returned in the fall of 1795 and Mary and Imlay's relationship ended for good. In 1796, Mary returned to a familiar writing circle and began a relationship with William Godwin. After Mary became pregnant, the two married in 1797 so the child would be legitimate. 
the marriage was a bit scandalous. You see, many people had thought that Mary and Imlay were married, in part because, well, Mary had told them that they were. Uh, Mary had referred to herself as Mrs. Imlay to protect her daughter Fanny's reputation. The marriage to William Godwin proved that Mary was not married to Gilbert Imlay. Mary gave birth to her second daughter, also named Mary, on August 30, 1797. Mary Wollstonecraft caught puerperal fever after the placenta became infected during the labor. On September 10th, Mary Wollstonecraft died of septicemia. She was survived by her husband, William Godwin, as well as her two daughters, Fanny Imlay and Mary Godwin, later known as Mary Shelley. After Mary's death, William Godwin published an account of her life called Memoirs of the Author of Vindication of the Rights of Women. Godwin's account told the world of Mary's relationship with Imlay, Fanny's illegitimacy, and Mary's two suicide attempts. As a result, Mary Wollstonecraft's reputation was ruined for many years. In the 19th century, though, it would recover. Mary Wollstonecraft's writings inspired the abolitionists and early suffragettes Lucretia Mott and Elizabeth Cady Stanton. The feminists of the 1960s and 1970s also praised her work, and also praised her previously controversial lifestyle. Today's women owe a lot to Mary Wollstonecraft. She inspired the suffragettes and eventually the women's liberation movement. She was even the first to suggest that boys and girls be educated together. The first step towards equality for women was taken by her, both with her writings and her lifestyle. She might not be as exciting as some of the other women have discussed, but for everyday women in the Western world, she may be the most important. And that concludes the seventh episode of Great Woman History. Next week, I will be discussing Mary Wollstonecraft's daughter, Mary Shelley. If you enjoyed this video, then please like and subscribe. If there is any particular woman that you would like for me to do an episode on, then please mention her in the comments below. Thank you.